In an interview with Ryan Nobles of CNN, Bernie Sanders said that he believes that part of the reason why he lost the nomination was because of the media's propaganda, their nonstop bias against him. And this isn't just like an anti-Bernie bias. This is a bias that corporate media has against the left, more broadly speaking. So this isn't a surprise to anyone. I don't think this is refutable. What Bernie Sanders says is correct. Now, is the media the main factor why he lost? I don't necessarily believe so, but was the media a factor in his demise? Yes. Now, here's what he said specifically. I think what we saw from Nevada on out was a cry from the rooftops, from the political establishment, from the media, that they wanted anybody but Bernie. Anybody but Bernie. My God, I don't know how many articles they were about. We need anybody but Bernie. And you know, they ended up succeeding. And that's that. Now, I probably wouldn't argue that the media ultimately is what sunk his campaign because, again, I think there were a number of factors both inside and outside of our control that led to Bernie Sanders losing and Joe Biden, Joe Biden winning. Um, but, I mean, to deny that the media played a role, I think you're being incredibly dishonest and intentionally obtuse. I mean, when you see people going on national television talking about how Bernie Sanders makes their skin crawl or he's disheveled and unlikable, or you bring on body language experts to prove that he's lying, you know, if you call him a hypocrite because he's a millionaire, because he sold a book, I mean... There's no other candidate that put up with this, right? So Bernie Sanders had more disadvantages coming into 2020 than any other candidate. Now, that's not to say that we couldn't have overcome the media's bias, but I think it's really important that we factor in the media's influence here because I think that without them, without them constantly shitting on Bernie Sanders, he could have won. Maybe they didn't, you know, unilaterally cause him to lose, but maybe if they actually were as fair to him as any other candidate, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, maybe he could have won. I don't know. But what I do know is that the people who are part of the problem, like Chris Silas of CNN, take issue with Bernie's assessment here that the media played a role in his demise. And Chris Silas penned probably one of the worst op-eds I've ever read, where he talks about why Bernie Sanders is wrong without actually hearing any counter arguments to his position. So he writes this about Bernie Sanders' quote that we just read. In just a few sentences, Sanders A lumps the media in with the political establishment as actors working to keep him from the nomination, and B lambasts the number of articles allegedly written seeking anybody but Bernie. In August of 2019, Sanders sent an email to supporters that read, in part, corporate and billionaire-owned media often tilts coverage against candidates who push a working-class agenda, an agenda that threatens the political power of corporations and billionaires. In February, Sanders campaign manager Fayez Shakir told Vanity Fair that MSNBC is constantly undermining the Bernie Sanders campaign. Following his Super Tuesday losses, Sanders again turned to the media for blame. There has not been a campaign that has been having to deal with the venom by some in corporate media, he said. This campaign has been compared to the coronavirus on television. We have been described as the Nazi army marching across France. And as Margaret Sullivan helpfully noted in the Washington Post, there were, without doubt, opinion commentators at some major media outlets who wrote pieces deeply skeptical of Sanders' chances of beating President Donald Trump. But evidence of some sort of broad-scale effort by the media to keep Sanders from winning? There's not much of that to be had, and by blaming the media for his defeat, Sanders takes credit away from the remarkable comeback that Joe Biden, the presumptive nominee who he formally endorsed just this week, engineered. The point? The media is an easy scapegoat, but not always the right one. Now, believe it or not, I just read you basically the entire article with the exception of like two paragraphs. That was a bad argument. That was not an argument. Saying that the media is not biased against Bernie Sanders requires more than you just saying, well, here's examples X, Y, and Z of Bernie Sanders saying that the media was biased. No, actually go through the examples of bias because there are numerous examples and even data that proves that the media was against Bernie Sanders. I mean, there was a quantitative analysis from In These Times that revealed MSNBC didn't just give Bernie Sanders the least amount of coverage. 
out of the three front runners, but they also covered him the most negatively overall. CNN ran a so-called investigative report about aggressive Bernie bros online, but a computational social science study found that Bernie Sanders supporters online are no different than the supporters of any other candidate, but yet that narrative persisted. And we're not just talking about a couple of biased op-eds here and there that are worried about Bernie Sanders electability. We're talking about non-stop bias against Bernie Sanders, almost none of which were founded in policy. If you didn't, you know, remember this little compilation put together by Jeff Miami and Winkle the Bernie Bro, look at just some of what the media said about Bernie Sanders and the way that they talked about him and dismissed him. Can I bring up the donkey in the room? Bernie? No. Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. But Sanders fading is a bigger story than people have given her credit for. The previous uh, set of numbers about Kamala Harris seems to suggest that Bernie bros are actually a real thing. <laughs> They're just waving his arms around, talking about revolution and all you, where we are going, we won't need roads. I mean, I am. One of the things I, I always hear from folks um, who aren't necessarily on the burning bus, so to speak, is, is that he's not really a Democrat. I saw Bernie Sanders trying to raise money off of it. Yeah, my, my, my timeline's going to be on fire. I thought it was horrible. And do you see any crossover, at least in those who are at his events, who kind of look and sound like Trump supporters? When you say he attracts those who feel like they're struggling, they're struggling to be heard and get their bills paid and their voices heard, that sounds like a Trump voter. I, I see him as sort of a, a not pro-woman candidate. And some oh, people say wait, that but, you but, but, Hillary but, Clinton's candidacy. Well, Bernie Sanders has done nothing between 2016 and today to expand his base, to expand his, his policies. He seemed like a socialist from the 1950s yelling at people um, in the same um, screechy voice, without smiling, without any kind of personal connection. Bernie Sanders has been talking about these same policies essentially since he's been in public service for the past 25, 30 years. But he actually hasn't done anything to pass them, right? He's talked a lot about them, but we have not seen any of these policies signed into law. When, when it happened for, with Hillary and, and, and what's his name? Exactly. <laughs> you would take the risk. I am you excited. Ex Donald Trump are you asking candidate. that of every candidate? He's also saying the same thing he said in 2016 this time around. I think that's not working. That's exactly the point I was going to make. I think he kind of got lost in the shuffle. Other people have kind of taken those issues away from him, and he looked like the angry man in the center of the stage saying, Get off my lawn. I think he comes off as, as mean. I think he's disparaging. A socialist candidate is more dangerous to this country as far as the strength and well being of our country than Donald Trump. Trump. I would vote for Donald Trump, a despicable <laughs> human being. Mm. No, I, you I, won't. I, I, let me tell you Stop something. Stop yourself. Le and there is a lot more. You can make the case that Fox News was more fair to Bernie Sanders because I don't remember where this article came from, but they assessed who's more likely to support Bernie Sanders and Fox News viewers were more open to Bernie than MSNBC viewers. Why? Well, because even if Fox News is covering Bernie negatively 100% of the time, they're at least airing enough of his platform to where his message is getting across. But on MSNBC and CNN, they don't even pay him that courtesy at all. Now, again, I'm not going to say that the media is the main scapegoat, right? They're the main reason why Bernie Sanders lost. I think that it's important for the left to do a real, honest, and objective post-mortem, and I plan on doing that at some point, but I think that we need to wait for the dust to settle, for time to pass, so we can actually figure out what we did wrong, so going forward, we're stronger. We know how to correct the mistakes that we made. But quote-unquote analyses like these from bad faith actors, they don't help the left. Chris Liz is trying to help you figure out why Bernie Sanders lost, so that way the next time you have a candidate that you support, you don't blame the media. You think, well, you know, this this isn't part of the reason why he lost. No, it is. It is part of the reason why Bernie Sanders lost. Not the main reason, but part of the story that we have to tell if we're going to be honest about why we lost in 2020. And Chris Eliza is not your friend. And just the way that he talks about Joe Biden's comeback this wasn't a comeback. Joe Biden did nothing. He won states he didn't set foot in. The reason why he won is because Obama got the entire establishment to coalesce around Joe Biden after he won South Carolina, which was expected. But the media came in, also assisted Joe Biden, you know, gave him fawning praise, had this comeback narrative already prepared probably before he won South Carolina. 
And, you know, all of these factors working together led to Bernie Sanders ultimately losing. But, I mean, for you to say that the media didn't play a role in Bernie Sanders' demise, I think that's incredibly disingenuous. You're literally gaslighting people. And this is why people don't trust the media. Because you all have class interests. This is why people hate media. This is why they don't trust media. Sure, you may not actually be in the tank for Joe Biden, but we know that you don't like Bernie Sanders because what he's proposing, what he was proposing, are against your class interests because you get paid millions of dollars every single year to spout propaganda that your advertisers love. They wouldn't be advertising on your network if they didn't like what you were saying, right? And these advertisers also are the same multi-billion dollar companies that donate to the Democratic Party. So it's a giant political establishment that doesn't just necessarily consist of political actors and political parties, but it also contains elites, oligarchs, the media. It's one huge package. So you don't get to basically wash your hands of guilt as to why the left lost. I mean, I'm sure that Chris Eliza is happy that Bernie Sanders lost, but he wants the left to trust him. CNN has a vested interest in making sure that they have legitimacy, right? So they're trying to make it seem as if, oh, well, who us? We didn't do anything wrong. No, you were against Bernie Sanders at every single step of the way, and you absolutely are guilty. And whatever attempts that the media makes to rebuild the trust, just remember it's all to save face because these are not news organizations. These are businesses that don't care about making you informed. They care about making money. And if you always keep that in the back of your mind and you also read manufacturing consent, you'll know exactly what their agenda is.